it's Culpa, and I'm here with a very interesting video, something that I've wanted to do for a little while now. Uh, I would like to talk about things to keep in mind when you're thinking about getting ready to, in the process of, getting a fursuit. Whether it's your first one, your tenth one, whatever. There's some really important things to keep in mind. So, uh, to start us off, something that's really that's kind of paramount to even talking to a fursuit maker is having a reference sheet or a ref sheet. You need to have one. Most fursuit makers uh, won't even talk to you if you don't have one. Uh, it's, it's especially good to have one that is done digitally. Uh, traditional art can sometimes the colors might not come across how you want and trying to tell them like hey I worked in this red, but this is not the red that I want. Like, it can be a bit confusing. So either do it yourself or hire an artist to do a digital reference sheet for you. You want to see your character completely from the front, head to toe, from the back, head to toe, and sometimes even from the side. Making sure that if you have any special things to, that you want your maker to notice, like whether it's your scars or tattoos, anything like that, Make sure it is on your reference sheet. All of it, have it there. There's been so many times when people would do something, start making your suit, and they forget something, but if it's not on your reference sheet, it's not their fault. So make sure that you communicate exactly what you want in as many visual ways as you possibly can. So that's step number one. After that, it's important to think of what kind of suit do you want. Do you want just a head, some hand paws. I even started with only a tail. After that, there's partials. So maybe you want head, hands, feet, tail. Then you could wear your normal clothes with it. And after that, you've got your full suits. Uh, there are digigrade and plantigrade. Now, I have both. I started with the digigrade that has the extra padding in the legs, uh, the calves sometimes in the backside to give you that more animal leg silhouette, which is very nice. There's also your plantigrade, which is what my latest suit is. No padding, just a bodysuit. So there's definitely pros and cons to everything. You know, like uh, your partial suit, it's much cooler, it's cheaper, it's easier to get around and to pack itself. Plantigrade is really nice. Again, it's cooler and it covers you from head to toe. Digigrade is very neat. It really gives you that animal quality, but it's also warmer, heavier, and takes up more room to pack. So all these things are really good to keep in mind considering what you might do with it. So definitely you can even talk to people that have these suits too, talk to your maker, all that kind of stuff. Think about what you want and how you want your character to look. After that, big one, important one, budget. You need to have one. <laughs> it's very, very important. You have to remember that fursuits can cost hundreds up to thousands of dollars. These are not easy. These are not, you know, <laughs> This isn't something that you might necessarily be able to, you know, get in a store like a regular Halloween costume. This takes skill, time, a lot of trial and error, uh, ordering special furs, the right colors. Like, there's a lot that goes into a fursuit, much more than I even know because I don't make this at all. The sewing, the patterns, tattoos, scars, special markings, all of it. So please respect your suit maker's prices. Don't haggle. Don't try to throw a pity me and be like, well, I can't afford that or say things like, you're too expensive. Artists, crafters, they have the right to charge what they want, what their work is valued at to them and to others. So please respect that. So look around, take your time, do your research. Find a suit maker that works in your budget. Make sure that you can pay all of it before you start buying. You know, save up that money um, 
and make sure that you're able to pay in full because you don't want to go halfway and then, you know, really irritate your suit maker saying, oh, another bill came up, I can't pay you. Make sure that money is set aside in full. This is really important. Make sure that you pay your bills first. Pay your bills. <laughs> Fursuits, remember, these are a luxury item. You don't have to have one to be a furry or to be in the fandom. So make sure that you are responsible and take care of yourself, your family, your other needs, everything that comes first before the fun of a fursuit. So make sure you keep that in mind. Uh, and lastly, on the budget, another thing to keep in mind, and I learned this the hard way, ordering from out of the country, is make sure that one, are, are your prices in your currency? And if not, you have to budget more or maybe potentially less. And also there are shipping fees. So when my suit came into my country, my first suit from the US, there was an extra, I think it was over a hundred dollar fee at the post office to get it. So that was a surprise, the, uh, you know, amount that I wasn't prepared for. So definitely check into all of that first. Okay, so that's really good and important. Money's a big deal when getting a suit. Afterwards, another really important one is also researching your maker really, really well. Uh, my, uh, my second time ordering my, well, yeah, my second time ordering a suit, also my first time ordering a full body suit, I found a maker, their suit looked beautiful. Uh, I, I, I messaged them, they responded, they seemed very sweet. And you know, I started sending them money, payments every month, and they, and they turned out not to be a very nice person. Um, I was scammed, <laughs> uh, you know, I, they, communication was a mess. Uh, the suit wasn't the shape or size or anything to what I had ordered or what I was expecting from their pictures. Uh, it was a bit of a nightmare. Uh, so I'm, I'm not going to name names or anything or bring up that, but it is very important because it did happen to me and I would hate for it to happen to anyone else. Make sure that you look into who your maker is. Look up, if are there bewares on that maker? Uh, it, can you find other people that have ordered from them in the past and talk to them? Ask them, what was your experience like? Ask them what communication was like for them. Would they recommend that suit maker. These are all really, really important steps. I understand that when you're getting a suit, you're excited and you want it to happen now, but trust me, patience is worth it. Always do your research first. You never want to get scammed out of your money. So really take, take the time and do that research. Um, on top of that, make sure that uh, you read your maker's uh, TOS or terms of service. Keep a copy of it to make sure that things don't change as well. So that way they're safe and you're safe. So understand how they work, how they bill, everything in between. Make sure you have all of that in writing and keep copies for yourself. And on top of that as well, keep all of your communications. Every time you communicate with your fursuit maker, keep a record of it, hang on to that. Because you wanna make sure that if there is any miscommunication, whether you know uh, done intentionally wrong or just a mistake, that you have it to make sure that you're right, they're right, and everyone stays really happy and safe with their big purchase. Because it is a big purchase. It's, it's a lot of work for them and it's a lot of money for you, so always you know, take the time to have all your ducks in a row before you start doing something like this. Uh, okay, uh, last few things, uh, kind of to build on top of the research and keeping records of everything, is communication as a whole. Ask your fursuit maker, what is the best way to communicate with them? Uh, the very first time I got my first partial from uh, Bupa Galetti, uh, or Spirit Wolf Fursuits, they, were very, very upfront that they would communicate with me, I think it was every two weeks, whether they had something to show me or not. They would still check in and just kind of tell me where they were, what was happening. They would send me pictures um, of all of the steps to make sure that everything was right, scars, eyes, the whole kit and caboodle. It was absolutely wonderful working with them. I highly recommend them. So that's really important for you because you don't want to 
message them too much to the fact where it gets annoying and you don't want to go for weeks months or even longer without hearing back from your maker and not knowing why. So always make sure that you have a clear way to communicate and try to stay on that schedule. It keeps the stress low. <laughs> so definitely do that for yourself and for your maker. Uh, the next big step in actually getting forward to your fursuit is a DTD or a duct tape dummy. Uh, this is only for your full suits. So if you're getting a partial, you don't have to worry about it. But when you're getting a full suit, you have to get a duct tape dummy, which is basically you have to wear full body clothing, either pajamas that you don't mind cutting up or some kind of like a painter's zip up suit, something like that. Get friends get multiple friends to come over and help tape you up to make sure that when you get your bodysuit that it's going to fit you really well so make sure watch some youtube videos on how to make them talk to your fursuit maker if there's anything that they really want you to watch for to make sure that you follow their instructions really well to make sure that your suit fits really well so that's a nice one to keep in mind. And lastly, this is a, you don't have to do this by any means, but it's really good to keep in mind. And that is when you get your fursuit in the mail, video your unboxing. Like one, you can definitely get your fursuit maker before they send it to take a photo or multiple photos of the box that they're going to mail it to you in. That way, when it comes in, if there's major damage, you'll know that you know they didn't do it or they might be able to, to explain or something. So again, keep records of everything. So when you get your fursuit in, before you cut that tape, before you open that box, film it. Get a friend or loved one to film it for you so you can cut into it safely and carefully. And one, it's nice just to have for yourself or post somewhere. And two, it also makes sure that if there has been damage to your suit, either hopefully not, but from the maker when it left them or somehow in transit or anything, get it on film just to make sure that again, there's no miscommunications, nothing shady happening in the background, and everything comes to you safe, hopefully safe and sound. You can put it on for the first time in video, and it's a fun thing to share with your friends and your family. And then of course, at the end, have fun. Go out there, take photos, take videos, have fun fursuiting, send those pictures and videos to your maker, let them know that you've received it, that it fits well, and that you love it, and be appreciative, because they, like really, this is their pride and joy in making these for you, so they would absolutely love, I'm sure, to hear from you and to make sure that you're a satisfied customer, because that speaks a lot for them and their future business. So it's nice, that little bit of communication goes a long way. Okay, so that kind of wraps up my video. Now, obviously this doesn't cover everything. There's all kinds of small in-between things to keep in mind from, you know, style of head, details uh, in eyes, movable jaws. Are you having a realistic look, a toony look or somewhere in between? There's all kinds of stuff, but these are kind of, at least what I think are some of the big basics to keep in mind. So let me know in the comments below, was this helpful? Did I miss some key steps? Or hopefully maybe this was helpful when you're about to buy your first fursuit. So let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching guys. Please feel free to follow me here on YouTube. Subscribe, check out my Instagram for all kinds of cool pictures and feel free to join me on Patreon and you can see all kinds of goodies there as well. So again, let me know what you think. Thank you so much for watching. Enjoy your first fursuit if you're getting one. Bye.